Hello, catfish. I'm a 57-year-old. I live in Denver, Colorado. And my hobbies are trying to get time to go out to dance. I got a big family. And I know they love me. That's what has given me the strength for me to share this with you guys. Hello, everyone, and welcome back to another episode of Scamfish presented by SocialCatfish.com. On today's episode, we speak to a 57-year-old woman named Martha about her online relationship with a man named Alex. Martha has been through a lot of emotional distress since she was contacted by Alex through Facebook a year ago. She wants to know the truth about him after sending tens of thousands of dollars to help him with hospital fees, plane tickets, broken machines, and even a trip to Cancun that he never showed up for. Let's see if we can get to the bottom of this. Real quick guys, don't forget to like, comment, and subscribe. Your comment and like could help stop someone from being scammed. Let's get into it. I started this online dating thanks to my daughter. She came out and said, Mom, you are not having fun. You always just working at home. You need to open up and give you chance to meet people. This person that I met came out on regular Facebook just asking to be my friend. He just sent me a message. My name is Alexander telling me that he were, he was living in Atlanta and that he was some kind of engineer. So we started telling each other what we were doing. He was a widow. His wife and his daughter passed away in a car accident. And we just start from there. He was telling me about that he was cooking, that what he liked, and asking me the same questions. I replied, and he started texting me more often, how you doing, good morning. I hope you have a good nice day. And this is when it all started. Martha had been raising her children alone since her divorce with her ex-husband 17 years ago. She works long hours to support herself and her three daughters. She really wanted things to work out with her and Alex. I was married for almost 38 years. And then I got divorced. And I've been divorced since then. So it's gonna be 20, almost 20 years that I've been divorced. The only good thing I got of that relation was beautiful daughters that I love to I die. My husband was hard for him to deal to be married, I guess. He liked to party a lot and he was drinking a lot until one day I took everything until one day I said enough is enough and we got divorced. But I've never been lucky. I always get people that either try to control me or they want me to support them. Or toxic, where they're really jealous that they don't want me to talk to anybody. They wanted me to be a completely different dead person that I am. So they never last. And matter of fact, five days before I start talking to Alex, uh, I was dating somebody. Martha had a lot of bad relationships in the past. She felt that Alex was a change. He worked, he was handsome, and was so nice to her. She was starting to feel like she had really found the one. And like say, he was real, he is a real attractive person. He's a good looking guy, beard, big blue eyes. And that's what caught my eyes, his eyes. He got so beautiful eyes. In the beginning with Alex was real sweet. It's like having a friend, having that person to talk, to let you know, hey, I got a bad day, or oh, I got an amazing day. It was so nice to be able to talk to, and he was there, you know, I would text him all the time. It was a lot of messages. It gets you to where you start trusting the person where you can feel that the person is paying attention to you and you're on the needy 
of attention that you have have in years. We messenger for about I don't know, say two weeks, and then he asked if we can be on WhatsApp. But it was at least ten messages a day, at least from the beginning. Two weeks after we start talking, he just tell me that he have to go for a contract in Turkey. And that's when all these money interests start going. After about a month of chatting through WhatsApp, things started to take a turn. Alex told Martha he was involved in an accident. He blamed it on Martha. He said she was texting him too much and he hurt himself using a machine at work. About two months later, oh my gosh, he got an accident where he was working at. And he actually sent pictures where he got a big cut in his leg and he was going to have some stitches done. And the worst part that he had to pay for the part that he broke because he was answering one of my texts and he didn't pay attention and left the machine running. So yeah, he blamed it on me. And that's when the big money he wanted we start coming out. I need $16,000. That's when the lights start on my side because I have to hide that from my daughters. Getting the gift cards, taking pictures of it, send it to him, getting all that little by little. Day after day, Martha would go to the stores to get the gift cards to help Alex. She bought so many, the store started to limit Martha on the gift cards she was able to buy. They would only sell her one card every time she went to the store. She tried Walgreens, Walmart, and the Dollar Tree. After she scratched the code on the back of the card, she would send it to Alex and throw the card away so her family didn't find out. In total, I sent Alex $24,000 in a year. But you know what? That's when everything else starts. I'm coming back because I'm go we're going to get married. Up until this point, Martha had sent money to Alex for his hospital fees and travel expenses, totaling to $12,000. Alex had finished paying everything and was ready to meet with Martha and get married. All he needed Martha to do was pick him up from the airport. The first time that Alex told me he was coming. I went to the airport so excited. I tried to look as best as I could get to the airport, sitting there waiting for two hours, seeing people pass by and nothing coming and trying to message him. He didn't answer. He didn't text me back. Walking out of the airport, just every little piece of me dragging myself to the car and driving home, crying, upset. Why me? Why? Martha had waited a full day for Alex to arrive at the airport, but he never showed up. She even got a hotel next to the airport that night. She stayed up all night waiting for him to call her back. She later received a text message from Alex. He told her that he wasn't able to leave his job site until he paid the fees to fix the broken machines. After he already got around $12,000, he's coming. But you know what? He had to pay for the parts that he broke. So he needed another $10,000. And here goes another $10,000 in my credit card. Honey. I'll be there. I'll be there in three days. This is the day. Martha sent an additional $10,000 to Alex for the parts that he needed to fix. Alex was getting on the plane once again. All he needed Martha to do was pick him up and he would pay her all the money back and they would finally get married. I'll get to the airport again. Eight hours. Eight hours hours and hours for me looking around and crying my eyes out crying and crying and crying something must happen because he's not here heartbroken upset and I say no more I can't 
I can't. I can't. I can't get sick again. I can't. Next day, I'll get an uh, email from a doctor in Turkey saying, Alex got a, in a car accident. He's in real bad shape here in the hospital. He might die. We need to let you know. He needs in a surgery. I don't want that anymore. I can't be broke. Horrendous. No more. For a picture. Or why do you let it go? So bad. Of Alex. Scammers will do and say anything to get you to feel loved. This is a common tactic they use to create an attachment. All of the problems that Alex went through always turned into reasons for him to ask Martha for money. We looked into the doctor that was emailing her and found that the scammer used a stock image of a doctor and communicated with Martha through email. We searched this email and found out that it was brand new and just had been recently created. Alex was never planning to see Martha, nor was he injured while he was working. All of these stories were fabricated and the images Alex sent to Martha were stolen from another man's profile. We were able to help Martha with the tools on our site and good news, they're available to you too. We have plenty of tools that you can use to verify your online lover. So visit our website, socialcatfish.com, and find out the truth about who you're communicating with online today. Just hitting like, comment, and subscribe helps us build out more tools for you to use in the future. It was now time to sit down with Martha to let her know what we had found. Martha, it's great to see you again. Hi, Martha. Nice to meet you. Nice to meet you guys. It seemed that you, you were tied emotionally to Alexander. What, what was so special about him? He always involved me and wanted to know about me as a person. Is what did I did, how my day was, how my night was, how my work was. He was worried, concerned about my health. <laughs> All the nice things that you want to hear from a person. Breaking the news to Martha was tough because we knew it would be hard on her. But this was the only way to stop this scam. We also researched the photos that you sent us. And we ran a reverse image search on our site, Social Catfish. Um, and we found the real identity of the man in the photos. His name is Rex. He is not the man you're speaking to. Martha was so shocked to hear the truth about Alex. She had to leave the room for a while to pull herself together. Can you give me a minute, please? Yes, absolutely. You may go clean myself. This was a man she was engaged to and sent $25,000 in hopes of meeting him. Realizing that this was all a bunch of lies, it had to cut her deep. Would you mind telling me his name again? Yes. His name is Rex. He is an adult entertainer. Like I mentioned, he's part of the LGBTQ community and he has a prominent social media presence. I want to dream about some, so many nights, about touching his face, about talking, to hear his voice. The, it changed my life. And it changed it in a good, in a bad way, because now I'm stronger in a lot of different ways. I have done things that I never thought I would be doing. Let me tell you what this cry is from a stronger person that is gonna come out from the little hole they put him in. Because I was not if, because I never knew all these things. Now I know. And I will never be foolish again. You know, something that you mentioned, Martha, is you fell in love with a face. You fell in love with an image. Us finding the real person in the image, Rex, he is a completely different person than the person you fell in love with. He is 
has a, his own personality. He's, you know, active in the LGBTQ community, obviously completely opposite from the man, the face that you fell in love with. Just to be clear, the man in the photos has nothing to do with this scam. His photos were stolen to create a fake person named Alex and is also a victim of this scam. But as you can see, this happens to a lot of people and a lot of different types of people. It seems like you were able to come out of this relationship and you even sought help, you know, from a counselor. And so it looks like you're taking the steps to move forward. I feel that you're doing a great job and you're moving past this situation. Only a bit, nobody foolish again. And if someday I find somebody who want me, want all this, the way it is, perfectly. But let me tell you, it's not gonna be on a dating site anymore because I don't trust them. Well, I'm, I'm happy for you, Martha. Yes. Um, you know, it sounds like you're turning into a whole new Martha. Yes, Martha, it seems like you're on the right track. Uh, mm -hmm. We're so happy to have helped you today. And like I mentioned, we'll be in touch. Talk to you soon, guys. Bye-bye. Thanks for watching another episode of Scamfish, everyone. Remember, new videos go out every Wednesday. If you or anyone else you know might be going through a scam, please send an email to sharemystory at socialcatfish.com. See you guys next week.